Welcome back to Impulse Audio. Today, we're looking at the Celestion TSQ-1845. A lot of hype has been going around about the 24-inch, and I actually have one of those myself. But I've decided to start with the 18-inch because I have a use for that. And this funny-looking box is actually meant to go in the back of a 2016 Gulf. So it's kind of trapezoidal, and today we're going to look at briefly how I built that, and some quick measurements, frequency response, and impedance. Right now, this is sealed, and it's really meant to be ported. So in a second video, after I have all the sealed information and can get the TS parameters and stuff, I'm going to port it and share that with you too. So let's get into it. Here is the driver in the original packaging. It is very light because of that neodymium motor that comes on this driver. It came to me double box. I'm not sure how it'll ship to customers. That might depend on where you buy it from. But it was packaged very well, and I was very excited to get into this thing and have a look. This is a Pro Audio driver, but I've worked with a few Celestion drivers, and they always look really good, and this is no exception. Let's be honest, Pro Audio drivers often look kind of bad, but the foam surround and the accordion surround look very nice on this driver. Here's a good look at the pole vent on the back. The neodymium motor is very nicely constructed. The basket in the back of the cone and surround looks very good. The leads are very nice. Everything, everything is positive. Everything's very high end, as it should be on such an expensive driver. But this definitely impresses. Here's a quick look at the 18 next to the 24. These are identical twins, other than the size, which is very important. But it's nice to see that the 18 inch comes with all the bells and whistles that the 24 inch do does. It's it's virtually the same driver, just bigger. Um, or smaller in the case of the 18. Here's a quick look at what we're replacing with this driver. It's a little GRS 10 inch that was in a plywood box in the back of my son's car and we never got around to finishing it and then this came in and so we just had to upgrade because I think this driver has a lot of car audio potential as well as pro audio potential and home audio potential don't get me wrong. <laughs> Uh, this isn't a build channel, but I do just want to quickly share a little bit of how we built this enclosure because it is going into a car, into a hatchback, and so there is some difficulties constructing it. It's, it's a challenging build, and so I just figured I'd show you what I did here. And I think it's important when you're evaluating a driver to understand what I'm doing with it. So I started by building about a 125 liter sealed box just out of plywood and at this point for the purposes of this video it's going to be ported but we just kept it sealed it's not even braced at this point that's now happened but for the time of filming we didn't brace it we didn't port it uh it had a lot of resonance but we wanted to get it into the car test fitted uh without going too far down the road and also get the driver broken in so we quickly slapped this together with glue and nails. It's difficult to use clamps, although we did use some clamps. And um, just got this thing kind of workable. A lot of the joints are a little bit loose and everything, but we um, plan to epoxy the inside, get everything nice and tight and sealed up tight, as well as very strong. We'll add bracing, we're gonna add those ports and everything else. So yeah, just a quick look at what we did and where we're coming from with this. I'd say this is probably one of my favorite parts of building a speaker enclosure is flush trimming things. It's just so satisfying. Everything comes out real tight and smooth and actually looks good, unlike the rest of it that needs a lot of sanding. Here's a quick test fit in the car. We wanted to make sure it uh, fits. And as you can hear, it is not great. Um, that's not a surprise and I'm okay with that at this point. Everything fit fine and it seems to be working, so I committed to cutting the driver hole. This was a challenge on a sloped baffle, but we got the job done. There it is, ready to go. So without wasting any time or adding bracing or anything like that, we went ahead and installed the driver and got it into his car so we could work on getting it broken in, which he was very happy to do. And uh, yeah, it fit like a glove. Look at that. I think it's quite comical in that car. Once it was broken in, we took some measurements. We measured near field. This was measured using his car audio amplifier, which has a uh, 220 hertz maximum 
low pass frequency i a uh, low pass crossover it's non-defeatable so that's in there so if you're looking at the response above 200 hertz keep that in mind this driver certainly can be used above 200 hertz in say a pro audio application but we didn't explore that today maybe in the future you can see this enclosure is way oversized uh, for a sealed enclosure as we're getting between 7 and 10 db per octave roll off which is great but um you know, you could put this in a much smaller enclosure and still fit it into a smaller car or take up less trunk space or in your home theater or your DJ reg or whatever, and it would fit great. And you'd get the large surface area of the 18. Uh, so this is much better than a lot of high surround drivers, which would have a 12 dB octave or even steeper. So that just goes to show how strong the motor is on this thing. Okay, and then I measured in the car to see what kind of response he was getting and just how much cabin gain he was getting and things like that. So why not share it with you? This is a fairly small car, but cars are leaky. Um, so they do lose a lot to windows and things like that. But because the cabin is so small, they also gain a lot. And as you can see here, it did. Now, I'm not able to perfectly match the uh, cabin response and the near field response because they're at different power levels and things so i just took my best estimate which i used about the 200 hertz range to match them up so this could be higher or lower depending on what the real response is but you can see that the response really flattens out from that 7 to 10 db per octave roll off to almost perfectly flat other than a little bit of up and down due to reflections Reflections in a car happen just like they do in your home theater room or even in a big venue. So keep that in mind if you don't have a microphone and you're into car audio, this is happening to you too. So if my match is correct, we're getting about 24 dB gain uh, because of, uh, due to the cabin size, which is excellent. So this could be used sealed, especially if you're going for sound quality and you want very, very low extension. This would be an excellent choice and you'd get a lot of sensitivity compared to your usual high surround excru high excursion driver i then took an impedance response i can't really do much with this at the moment because it's just a free air impedance response but the driver's broken in and i had it out of the cab cabinet to do more work on it like i say there's not much we can do with this but we can pick off the fs just by eye we can see it's 35 hertz this perfectly matches the manufacturer's fs so i'm already excited to see that we're getting good agreement if we zoom in on the impedance response i wanted to point out that even though this is a four ohm driver because of the efficiency of this driver and the 35 hertz fs versus say like a 20 hertz fs or something like that on other types of drivers a lot of the bandwidth that you would use this driver on say 20 to 80 hertz is going to be six ohms and up that's even if you put it in a smaller sealed enclosure or ported enclosure and that impedance peak moves up in frequency response it's still going to be very very efficient this is good for your amplifiers okay that's a wrap for the celestian tsq 1845 obviously the sealed box from what we saw is way too big which makes sense because i plan on going ported with it uh, but I think there's a lot of potential here. This thing obviously performs really well so far. And I'm very excited to see what it can do ported because that's really what it's meant to do. Uh, but yeah, stick around for part two. I'm about to, I've got ports gluing up right here. We'll get those cut up right and installed in the box. We'll get all the leaks and everything solved and get this thing running really good. So stick around for that. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe because that's what I'm supposed to say, right? Talk to you later.